as we progressively move into a more and more Wayland focused world, developers are going to be faced with migration challenges. Now, many developers are just going to ignore it and rely on X Wayland forever. Or there's going to be projects that have just been abandoned and are never going to be updated again. A lot of developers just lean very heavily on their toolkit. If their toolkit has a Wayland version, then they have a Wayland version. But there is one project that I know about that is going in the other direction. They had a native Wayland version, and recently it's been disabled. That project being the PCSX2 emulator. Whilst there are certainly other PS2 emulators available, this is the only one that is recommended on desktop. And recently, one of the developers by the name of Stenzek opened up this PR, Disable Wayland and Spring Cleaning. Disables Wayland, it's super broken slash buggy in basically every scenario. KDE isn't too buggy, GNOME is a complete disaster. In a sense, I can appreciate the fact that GNOME is doing things that don't align with what the rest of the ecosystem wants. That is how we get, you know, big new changes and possibly come up with better ideas. However, from the developer's perspective, I can understand why that is really, really annoying, and they just wish there was a consistent standard that everybody actually followed. Now, a lot of the issues listed here aren't specifically GNOME problems, but some of them are. For example, stupid obsession with CSD in GNOME. Inconsistency. CSD meaning client-side decorations. This is where the application window is responsible for drawing its own window decorations. Things like the title bar, the close icon, minimize, things like that. Now there is a reason why GNOME likes this. It allows you to merge application elements into the decorations. This is what macOS does, for example, and when it is done well, it works really, really well. macOS has the advantage of being macOS where they control what the main toolkit is. GNOME doesn't have that. They are just a small piece of the rest of the Linux ecosystem. The other side to this is SSD server-side decorations. This is what KDE does. This is what pretty much everybody does, where very basic decorations are added to the window just to make the window functional. You don't have, you know, your menus in there. It is just a close button, title bar, things like that. The main problem, but also advantage with CSD, is it is really inconsistent. You will have applications drawing their decorations however they want. And when you have a toolkit that has a very clear guideline, like macOS does, that's fine. When you don't, and there's all of these different toolkits doing their own things, well, it looks like a mess. But due to GNOME's stubbornness of only doing CSD, there are some people out there that think that Wayland is CSD first and only supports CSD. No, this has not been the case for a long time. There is a whole protocol called XDG Decoration, which has the sole function of supporting SSD. Now, a very long time ago, there was an issue to bring in XDG Decoration support, which went incredibly well and then continued to go incredibly well until it got eventually locked. Now, the rest of the Wayland ecosystem implements this protocol and supports the option of CSD or SSD. And even until this year, there is still discussions being had about CSD or SSD. And the GNOME developers are still wrong about it. Everybody else supports it, so it's about time to do so. Now, all of the Linux toolkits are set up to work properly on GNOME. They just generate CSD because you need it to be there so GNOME users can click on something. If you're not using a toolkit, a common solution is libdecor, which just lets you generate client-side decorations. Obviously, you could make it by hand, but why do that when there's a library? Now, the next problem is a more general Wayland problem, and one that we have talked about on this channel before. Inability to position windows, window position saving doesn't work, log window attaching, not merged yet, doesn't work. Now, this is a two-part problem. 
and we'll start with the second part. Now, on Wayland, if you close an application once you've moved the window somewhere, the application has no ability to restore its position. On X11, on Windows, on pretty much everything out there, the application can reopen in its prior location. And this is especially important for a multi-window application, whether it's a scientific application, whether it's GIMP in its multi-window mode, you're going to move those windows around and you want them to be where they were previously. That is not possible on Wayland, at least for now, because there is something being worked on called the XDG Session Management Protocol. This one here. It is currently an open request, but it is seeing a lot of positive discussion, and it's fairly likely that this is eventually going to make its way to Wayland desktops. Do keep in mind the pace of things in Wayland protocols. It's been a work in progress for three years, so it could be a work in progress for another three years. It's really unclear at this point. As for the other problem of inability to position windows. You as a user can place a window wherever you want to place it. The same cannot be said from the code side. The application cannot choose to place its windows where it wants to place them. Window placing is entirely owned by the compositor. Once again, this is not a problem on X11, on Windows, on macOS, on any sensibly designed system. There is some work being done to address this problem. The main protocol is from someone called Matthias Klump, initially with the EXT placement protocol, then with XDG alignment. Both of these are fairly controversial protocols within Wayland protocols. People across the entire Wayland world have chimed in, and a lot of them are in favour, a lot of them are against it, this is one that I really don't see being merged at least for three or four years, if ever. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we go through another two or three protocols before we get to one that anybody's actually happy with. The question then, if it's actually usable. I wish that this first one was implemented. It'll make it work like X11 and it'll make porting applications really, really easy. That's too sensible though. Anyway, moving on. Hacks in render domain because Wayland craps itself otherwise. This sounds like an implementation issue on their end. Despite said hacks, game list still glitches after stopping emulation. Happens more often in GNOME. I don't know exactly what would be happening here. I imagine it's some like weird QT bug, but that's really hard to explain. Nvidia just crashes in swap chain creation under Wayland. In the past, there have been bugs with this patched in the Nvidia driver. Whether this is a new bug, or the developers are talking about an old bug, or maybe it's that old bug, but it's rearing its head again, there's been some sort of regression, entirely unclear. I am not an NVIDIA user, for good reason. Broken global menus. Now, I personally don't see the appeal of a global menu. As you can see from my desktop, no global menu here. No matter what application I open, there won't be a global menu. For anyone who doesn't know, a global menu is that thing you see on macOS where instead of the application menu being in the application, it's at the top of your screen. I get why people use it, it's just not my thing. Now, KD Plasma has had support for this for a long time, no issues whatsoever. And GNOME has always had this really weird relationship with it. Up until GNOME 41, there was this extension that a lot of people used. Okay, that was great. And then that got abandoned, so people moved over to this extension. Then this got abandoned, so people moved back to the original extension with this patch applied to it. So it is fair to say that by the time that GNOME 46 rolls around, it'll probably be broken again, and then get fixed like six months later until they sort it out, which is unlikely since there's been very little progress over the last decade, just keep it disabled. For the flat packs, users can re-enable it with flat seal if they really want the crappy experience. Now, for the non-flat pack users, there is a great variable you use. If you want to suffer, there's the I want a broken Wayland UI environment variable, which was added with this patch right here. Now, one thing I will really disagree with is over the past decade, there's been very little progress. Over the past maybe 
seven or eight years, there's been very little progress. But the last two or three, things have actually gotten serious. We know when Red Hat is going to drop support for Exorg, and things are actually being fixed relatively quickly. Now, the time scale on Wayland Protocols is still a fairly long time, so it takes a while for things to be done. But just three years ago, you couldn't capture your desktop on Wayland, and now if you actually want to make videos there, it's just fine, and a lot of other things are being addressed. So give it another couple of years, and things might be in a much better state. Now, there's still going to be problems, because there's always going to be problems, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are far less problems than what we currently see on X11. And the reason why this is being done is really simple. We're sick of getting blamed for bugs in Wayland Compositors, while the various committees sit around arguing with each other finally decide on standard ways of doing things after half a decade. Then GNOME ruins it all by refusing to implement it. This is a very recurring theme you'll see in my videos. Don't get me wrong, X11 is terrible code and should have been purged a decade ago, but Wayland is just broken and everyone would rather sit around arguing with each other instead of actually addressing the design flaws. And you know what? I couldn't agree more with this final point. As someone who has made many videos on many Wayland issue threads, there is so much bike shedding, people arguing over the dumbest little details, and it holding something back for one year, two years, three years. Like, things are being discussed, but they're taking so long because nobody can agree on what they're even discussing. That's not to say there is no cooperation and nothing goes smoothly. But the author also comments on the Whalen positioning issue. It's not the first time such a proposal has been put forward, something that developers need for their applications to work properly on Wayland, particularly multi-window applications, and it gets vetoed. Every other OS manages this fine, but apparently we're in the wrong for not conforming to some warp view of how applications should be, despite our applications working fine on every other platform. Especially the GNOME folks, not everyone wants to use the rubbish that they call GTK. As an OS developer, you need to have applications or it's kind of pointless by pushing developers away from your platform because they're tired of dealing with complaining users about things that are 100% out of their control, you have nobody to blame but yourself. This is going to be my nuclear take. For every developer out there, if you're having trouble with the Wayland protocols, don't sit around complaining in your own repos. Most Wayland developers are not going to check out your project. Go into Wayland protocols, Find the protocol that is going to fix your problem and explain what you need. Explain how this protocol is actually going to fix the problem. Because what we're seeing right now is a lot of desktop developers talking amongst themselves of things that work great for their desktops. But a lot of the time, their requirements aren't going to line up with your requirements as a developer. Make your voice heard, make it clear that you need something like this, and hopefully over time, with enough developers saying, hey, we need to fix this problem, I don't care that you don't want it fixed, if you don't have it fixed, you don't have applications, hopefully things will get better and better and better. So let me know your thoughts. Are you a PCSX2 user? If you are, let me know what game you've been playing. If you're not, I don't know. Do you use X11 or Wayland? Answer that question. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero page, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And soon, soon I'll be back on Wayland.